Here's Beathard to throw. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Well, the coverage was pretty phenomenal downfield, even though the protection was good. But sometimes you sacrifice pass rush when you're trying to play coverage deep, and it paid off for them in a big way. In his third year on is the punter, Bradley Pinion, to kick it away. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And this will be taken at the 13. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Bortles now on first down. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Quentin Dial with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. And the hook up here to Allen Robinson. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. That one good for 17 as they're set up better now for third down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. You and I have talked about it before, but what about the year this guy's had on the ground? You come in as a rookie and in the discussion as MVP. And people have always told me, running back, one of the easiest positions to break in, but not to this level. If you're talking MVP, that means he's had a sensational season. In a word, I would say productive, finding the end zone three different times. Is it possible that you're really underselling it? Three touchdowns, just going to call him productive? Right. What, what do you want? This guy had a nose for the end he zone. He was good. Had a snoop full, didn't he? How about that? Big time game. And he's going to get this inside the 30. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. They completed the screen on the perimeter, but boy, that was textbook defense. Exactly as you're taught to play against a wide receiver screen, and they snuffed it out for a loss of yardage. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Give him two on that run, and they're still left looking at a third and about nine to go. Working from the gun, it's Bortles. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Alan Hearns, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jags have taken the early lead. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first. An ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. The 49ers offense making its way back out there. You know, in our research packet this week, prepping for the game, so many articles from the local beat writer about the offensive struggles of this team and what will they do this offseason. What do you think they'll do? Well, number one, they'll turn to their self-scouting report. And every team that's any good does this. They have outside groups check out their team, scout them, and tell you who can play, who can't play, and reasons why. Some of it may just be health. They have to get some guys healthy and back out on the field. But overall, evaluate this squad and make the changes that you need to. All right, here we go. 3 19. 3 -19. They'll throw here. Bathard. Blitz coming and down he goes. Paul Puslozny in there to get him, and that's sack number eight for him on the year. 
You know darn well both of these teams reviewed the film and saw that this defense had five sacks last week. They got to keep their QB upright. And they're going to try their best to do exactly that. But they're facing a team where getting to the quarterback is a mindset. It's a mantra for them. And they play a game within the game. And you know what it is? Let's race to the quarterback and see who gets there first. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. That's pulled in at the 32. And it's a 45-yard punt, then eight on the return. And possession will switch hands, first and ten. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. And it's incomplete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. On second down, here's Fournette. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion. And now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Morris Jones drew in 2011. And Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Shotgun now for Bortles. Eluding the pressure right, and he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Ladarius Green, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. This one fielded at the five. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard at the 16. We remind you, no night game tonight on Christmas Eve, but we make that up with two games under your tree tomorrow. Oh, that's nice. Yes. I'm just reading the card. I got to give props to our writer, Ed Brady, there. But we start with the Steelers and Texans at 430 Eastern, followed by the Raiders and Eagles, a Super Bowl 15 rematch. You impressed that I know that? I'm very much impressed that you know that. Who was the MVP? <laughs> yep, that'll be at 830 Eastern from Philadelphia. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. Give to Hyde. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 more yards there and another first down. 
I think we saw some of the best qualities of Carlos Hyde on that run, able to pick up something there, being physical running the football, but I think he's got really good vision and great feet. He's going to be the key to this offense really being revitalized. They run again with Hyde on first. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. So now 11 yards to go for this offensive unit. It's second down. To throw is Beathard. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Now Beathard. It's complete to Jeremy Curley. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit, throwing it a little bit more. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Now a play fake here on first down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And fortunately, he's able to reel it back in, but it's going to go down as a big loss here on the play. Well, that was a big oops right there. But how about his ability to correct it? Loses the football, able to get it back himself. Yeah, pounced right back on it, keeps possession. To throw is Beathard. And McDonald here over the middle. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. The Niners on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to more NFL action on EA Sports after this. The Niners on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Back to throw Beathard. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up fourth down. On fourth down, Kyle Shanahan will send out the field goal unit. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And this one is right down Broadway. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14-3. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. A good pick up there of 20 yards. They go play action here on first down. And Green with a catch left side. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Throwing on first down is Bortles. Flush to his right. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think there he had to come up with his primary receiver in a big way, just trying to get it to a secondary guy, unable to get that play completed. Checked down, but didn't even have enough time to do that, incomplete. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A Jacksonville first down on a pickup of 17. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Slants are so tough to cover because everything happens so fast. But sometimes it happens too fast for the guy catching the ball because all of his movements have to be quick off the line of scrimmage, and then all of a sudden the ball's right on top of you. And maybe he got a little bit ahead of himself there. Yeah, a lot of times coming in with good pace, and he dropped it. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. And it's 21-3. to three. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Jags grab it. It's never a good place on the field to fumble the ball. Let's just call it as it is. But definitely not in your own red zone. <laughs> in your own red zone, it's heightened, isn't it? Because you're almost automatically giving up a score. And, the and he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there as the first half is winding down and the Jaguars add on to their lead. Heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This one fielded at the five. Oh, spinning away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Seconds remaining in quarter number two. They'll throw now on the final play. Carrying it deep for Garcon. And that is incomplete. So we've reached halftime here. Let's throw in a broadcaster clip. Happy holidays, Larry. Your gift. Take the halftime show off, partner. We've got some football to get to. Now the return, Rashad Green. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And as this offense makes their way back out, it's AFC playoff race time as we give you a look. And for them, it's no longer a question of will they make the playoffs. They've clinched the division title. The question, can they hold on to that number one seat? And this is where the mental fortitude comes to play, doesn't it? Because now you're not just the coach talking about it. It's team talking about it to each other, supporting each other, carrying each other along, because having that number one seed means everything in the NFL. It does. So even though the division title's clinched, shouldn't take the foot off the gap. No, not at all. Play it all the way through. And I think we've seen that in recent years in the NFL. The teams that play and play to win each and every game, they're the ones to deal with in the playoffs. 
And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Here we go now. Let's go. Right. Now a play fake. Bortles. His throw caught at about the five. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. A great effort there. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars are pouring it on. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone, and in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now, no question about it. And you talk about on his back, he's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, those, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. Let's see what they have up their sleeve. Here's Beathard to throw. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Paul Puzlosny in there to sack him, and that is 10 for him now on the year. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And it's fielded at the 34. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And last time out, another touchdown. And I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this was just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? You and me, trying to get to the airport. That's the road true. to be fairly that, clear that by the time positive. we have to leave the booth. A big third down play there for the Jags. 43 yards. One of the reasons that this team is on this win streak, big runs like that. When you see runs like that broken off, you know this is a team that's confident running the football. A big reason why this streak has occurred, they've come together, had a plan, and stuck to it. And when you get big-time runs like that, it makes it easier to stay with it, doesn't it? Bortles on the give to Fordham. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a good gain of 11, sets him up first and goal. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Now Leonard Fournette. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Now they'll throw it. Bortles got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Ladarius Green with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Jaguars continue to roll. And he'll bang that one through. Here's Myers now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. 
And San Francisco gets set to go here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there to swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways? In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. From the pistol, they'll run with high. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. He lost two there, and it's third down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. A gain of four on the play, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. And this will be down by a member of the kicking team just outside of the 30-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Four yards remaining now on second down. They'll run it again with Fournette. And, oh, a good hit there and knocked down hard right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. But Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is, don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. On first and ten, here's Bortles. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's green. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That's 30 yards now in the last two plays. Back-to-back 15-yarders, -back and they're rolling. First down, Bortles. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. Fourth quarter, you've got the big lead. If you're coaching, Charles, you, you still taking shots like that downfield? I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around, you throw a couple of picks, you can put yourself in jeopardy. And room there to work it inside the 25. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, 
you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Now Bortles on the bootleg, rolling to his right. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone <laughs> can stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, We've got no shot to beat this team. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. The Niners on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and 11. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky. They'll set up to throw. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Taking it about the 16. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. He has really been buoyed here by a strong running attack. They've been great on the ground. And have enjoyed the entire process because oftentimes when you're running the football well, that's much more of a team effort. Everyone has to come together to make it work. Offensive line, wide receivers, the tight ends when they're on the field, maybe an extra running back leading. It is a really nice thing to see, a team type of thing. And guess what? The quarterback, he can get out of the locker room a whole lot faster after this game. The interviews are going to go to the running back. Yeah, now we hit the home stretch here in the fourth with their lead. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Bortles. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And he is hit pretty hard from the side as he's knocked down near the 48-yard line. It's a gain of five, and it'll be second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Maybe not exactly what they had in mind, but that scramble good for six and a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside the 40. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Portal's going to throw. Buying time to his left. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. What's the old adage, be quick but don't hurry? Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. The play fake to Ivory. Now Bortles. Flushed out right. 
He can run for it, and he will. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. over the middle and able to get him down but he does reach the five and now before this first down play we're going to get a timeout here it's just their first they've got two more to use here in the final stages they'll try and run for it with Fournette and he will push his way forward down to about the three yard line now before this second down play we'll get whistles and a timeout That'll leave him with just one hey, remaining hey, hey, in hey, this hey, fourth hey. quarter of play. Here we go. Here we go. Three, 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 three. A fake to Fournette. Now it's Bortles to throw. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. You have fun with this one, partner. I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone. This guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up his right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. San Francisco gets set to go here. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Well, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Here's Beathard to throw. That'll be incomplete with nine seconds now showing on the clock. Carlos Hyde was the target. And that takes us from second to third down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass incomplete. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A big offensive explosion. Helps. 